Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight I've Always made my Troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah You 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life who believes in me will live even though they die and whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The hour is coming and now is when his only son that hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear we live. At every turn, life links us to the Lord and when we die, we come face to face with him in life or death. We are in the hands of the Lord. Christ lived and died and lives again to establish his lordship over dead and living. Things beyond our seeing, things beyond our hearing, things beyond our imagining have I all been prepared by God for those who love him. We welcome you to this homegoing service for our brother Owen. We are here to honor Owen who has died. We are here because in one way or another, his death affects us all. We are here to listen again to some of the great words of the Christian faith, to consider, to remember, and in quiet gratitude, to give thanks for his life and our own continuing lives. We are here to renew our trust in God who has said, I will not fail you or desert you. And so as we come this morning to pay our last respect, we want not to mourn like people without hope, but to live remembering that life and death is not final. But after death comes the judgment. And so I will now ask the congregation to sing the opening hymn to the tune of the happy wanderers, the Lord's my shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd.
God in prayer. Father, your love is stronger than death. By you, we are all being brought to life. Help us as we hear the promises of your word that our fears may be dispelled, our loneliness will be eased, and our hope reawakened to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. This morning, we will be able led through the program by our sister Camille Wright Pattison. Sister Camille. Good morning, church. I know it's indeed a sad occasion to be here. It's not easy to say goodbye to a loved one. So I just want to encourage you this morning, just cast your care on Jesus. He truly understand. Cry if you have to. No one knows what you're going through but you. So I just want to encourage you this morning, just leave it at the altar. So we will have our first lesson. It will be done by Patrina Green, a sister of the deceased. She will be reading John 14, 1 to 6. After that, we will have a selection from cousin Vilma Brown. Please come in that order. Good morning. Um, today's first lesson will be taken from John 14, 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.
I'm just going to sing one verse of this song for the family. A country where no twilight shadows be And ending days where night shall never be Wesley Hutchinson, he will be doing a condolence. Followed by that, we'll have Nardia Taylor, a cousin. She'll be reading the second lesson, which will be taken from 1 Corinthians 50, verses 50 to 58. And then after that, the welcome Seventh-day Adventist Church. Please come in that order. Good afternoon again. So today I'll be filling in for um, Deacon Wesley Hutchinson. Remembrance of the Deceased by Deacon Wesley Hutchinson. Owen Bowers, deceased, Hanover Parish, number nine. Member of clergy, friends and relatives of the deceased, represent representatives of the mortuary, boys and girls, greeting in Jesus' precious name. This is Deacon Wesley Hutchinson, retired. On this day, May 21st, 2022, I am here to give remembrance tribute on behalf of Owen Bowers, lovingly called Tith Willow, 
and the litter police. I was very close to the deceased from a very early age because of his sickle cell. I always spoke to him and his sister, Petrina, that's me by the way, known as Star, about the Bible and the love of Jesus Christ. He grew up to be very industrious and willing to try anything to earn a living. He later migrated to Antigua and Barbuda to live with his mother, Bethune, known as Blue Girl. That's her, by the way. He developed and learned a skill as electrical and, in electrical and insulation, radio technician, and photography. In fact, when he, became, when he came back from Antigua and Barbuda, he was very handy in the community, even up to his last hours. He made history in photography by taking pictures of the agricultural produce. At one time, the pictures he took reached the JAS half-yearly meeting on display in Lucy Hanover and was also viewed by the Member of Parliament and other dignitaries. He was so helpful in the community that people who had any broken appliances would take them to him to fix. I was so happy and impressed when I heard he accepted the Lord as his personal savior. I miss him very much, but God knows when to take home his children. In closing, the clarion will not be sounding, but instead, I will quote from Thomas Gray Elegy, which was written in the country courtyard. Far from the marling's cloud in noble stripe, their sober wishes never learn to stray Along cool celestial veil of life, they mark the noisily tenor of their way. In closing, message to the family and everyone is to seek God before it is too late. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our second lesson comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So then, this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall we brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in, this, in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, in as such as he hath known that your labor is not in vain with the Lord. May the Lord bless us as we meditate upon his words. I can hear a distant cry shouting out
time we'll be having some tributes. First will be Cocoon Church of the Nazarene, followed by a family song, and then a family friend, Mark Blair. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> well, good friend of mine, you know. Many morning time, he's coming early, come having breakfast, and we down there ready for them, you know. And there, me and the player, in win and down the game cold. You say, are you cold? You say, no, are you? You say, no, are you money? Are you cold? You say, all right, forget about that. We're done with that. You come in for the morning, damn it again. And I'm here to give tribute to him in song. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God lead his dear children along. Where the water flows cold at the weary one's feet, God lead his dear children along. For some through the waters and some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some to great sorrow, God gives us song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mountain we are sunshine so bright. God lead his dear children alone. Sometimes in the valley, the darkest of night, God lead his dear children alone. For some through the water and some through the flood. Some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, God gives us all in the night season and all the day sorrows befall us and Satan oppose God lead his dear children along to grace we can conquer defeat all the foes God lead his dear children along for some Some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, God gives a song in the night season. Away from the mire, away from the clay, God lead his dear children along. Away up in glory, eternity's day, God lead his dear children along. For some, through the water, Come to the fire, but all through the blood. Some to great sorrow, God gives us song in the night season. 
sun and all the day long. Thank you.
felt truly blessed listening to that song and I hope it was a blessing to you as well Mark Blair are you here all right moving along we will now have a selection from the Haddington Holiness Christian Church followed by a tribute from Thomas Hutchinson happy to be alive today hallelujah come on let's raise our hands in the crowd and give God all the glory all the honor and all the praise because I am alive glory to God oh and he's in the casket and can't worship anymore in can't say thank you Jesus but we are alive and well hallelujah Glory to God. At this time, I'm going to share with you what life is all about. Many of us take life for, child, for, for, for um, granted. We jump in our bed and we jump out. Back, hmm? We live like um, animals and we not even stop to say thank you, Lord. But here we are this morning. Giving thanks because we are alive. And so here the word is saying life is a challenge. So you got to meet it. Life is a gift. Accept it. Life is an adventure. Dare it. Life is a sorrow. Overcome it. Life is a tragedy. Face it. Hmm? Life is a duty. Perform it. Life is a game. Play it. Wow. Life is a mystery. Unfold it. Life is a song. Sing it. Now sing nobody else's song. Sing for your song. Hmm? Life is an opportunity. You're going to take it. We never us get the opportunity and we lose it. And we blame somebody else for the opportunity. Eh? Life is a journey. Complete it. Life is a promise. Fulfill it. Life is love. Enjoy it. Life is a beauty. Praise it. Life is a spirit. Realize it. Life is a struggle. Fight it. Mm. So many people fight their struggles. When they are going through a situation, they fight and they fight and they fight. Some give up easily. Mm. You say life is a puzzle. Solve it. Life is a goal. Achieve it. Well done, my dear teacher. Well done, because life is what taught us the different things we encountered with on a daily basis. And when we look at what happens here, life is amazing. Hallelujah. And that is why I shared a song with you this morning. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound, because God has saved the rich like me. Hallelujah. Amazing grace How sweet the sound the sound Blind, but 
Me dey listen for the near me. <laughs> but why you say not me, it's June. <laughs> Members of the clergy, moderator, musician, church family, bereaved family, visiting friends, representative of the martinary. Ladies and gentlemen, every time I happen to be at a funeral service, something crossed my mind. Simple to say, how oh, close we all are to death. Amen. If we look back on this young man, I believe by nature it do happen. He would say in his teenage years, I me do bury you know. No, we should not speculate because all plans belong to God. Amen. Some people will go about some time and tell you about who gone to heaven and where they gone. We know not where they are. All you have to do do your part. Yes. Do your part and that will be really rendered. When we look around and see what is happening today, we must take a stop because things are not what it used to be years gone by. There is a general change and it will never come back to what it used to be. This young man, I would say a very peaceful man go into the community and do what he have to do, have no quarrel, no worry with no one. We commend him for that because in coming peace, but did not go back in pieces. So we thank God for that. And if you listen to the funeral service and everybody speak, some sing, some talk, one pin drop out of my pocket, and I couldn't know she went drop out because everybody's attention was with the funeral. So we give God thanks to this kind of situation. The Lord give it, the Lord take it. Let us all put ourselves in the way that when we call home, we can say the same that was about the young man, we can see that that card call us home. So he was one of who you could take note of in the community. He is now gone. We left behind for peer rent, peer dead, peer all kind of sinti. But we have to do it. That's how it goes. So what we are going to see today is that he is gone, but we are left behind, and we have a task. If you travel the world today, you will notice that people read all kind of literature. They read magazine, they read Gina, they read Star, they read everything. But it does not bring comfort to anyone. What really brings comfort is when you read the Bible. So we should read the Bible to get the full comfort of God knowledge. Genesis, the first one, read it with care. God spoke and it was heard. 
if Exodus is second, you know, Lady Ticos the third. Going Deuteronomy number four, Deuteronomy five, the fight for Joshua command the 25th chapter, but the book of Psalm will tell you more. The prophet Isaiah said we should learn them. Learn them. Learn them and keep them in our mind. God bless you all. Keep the service on. Thank you, Brother Hutchinson. Indeed, there is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. He is here. He is here to break the yoke and lift the heavy burden. He is here. He is here to heal the hopeless heart and to bless the broken. Who oh, come and lay down your burden, for in the sanctuary, God is here. At this time, we'll have a remembrance from the Welcome SDA Church. Remembering Owen Boys by Tashoy, Cousin Tashoy. The family tree. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I hear a voice that whispers, grieve not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter, the songs. The good I lived while I was strong. Continue my heritage, I'm counting on you. Keep on smiling, the sun will shine through. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest. Remembering all, how I was truly blessed. Continue traditions, no matter how small, go on with your lives, don't stare at the wall. I miss you all dearly, so keep your chins up until that fine day we're together again. Owen Bowers was a kind-hearted, loving and caring person. He was loved everywhere he went. He's multi-talented and a jack of all trade, and yes, he mastered all. Very well too. Owen and I had a good relationship. From I knew Owen, he was always sick, but that did not stop him from achieving whatever goals he had in mind. Owen was very helpful in spite of his sickness. I remember when our grandmother was alive, I had something to do at church. I called him and told him the situation and he said that he's not well, but he will go and take care of her until I come. He was not, <clears throat> whenever he was to go to the hospital and I could not make it, I would call Tafane or Marie, Tafane is me by the way, and Marie sitting right down there, to go with him, and as soon as he reached home, he would, remember, he would report to me. He always called to check up on each other. Whenever I called him, his response was, I will trouble you now. I would laugh and say, are you trouble me? And he would laugh. As time goes by, his sickness worsened, and I ensure that every Saturday I go and visit him and bring, him lun bring lunch for him. He also was a sweet, had a sweet tooth. He loved baking, pastry, and some people, but we, in the, in the normal Jamaican terms, we say, Lord, I love baking, I have a sweet tooth, right? I remember a week before he died, he called me and was boasting that he was able to walk to his gate and back in the house without a stick. And I was excited too. And he was just giving God thanks. 
he was coming on good. Little did we know that it would not last long. Two days before he passed, I called him several times, but no answer. So I called Marie and asked her if she saw Owen. She said that when she was passing, the door and window was open, so I, had, I felt a little better. On Friday, April 1, 2022, I called him again, and I got him, so I told him, that he would see me tomorrow, that Saturday would be, that would be the Saturday. He, asked, he said, okay. Some of the brethren went to visit him on Sabbath morning, the 2nd of April. When my mom reached, he said, Miss Goody, you come, where is Stash? She told him that I was at church and would come later to, and would come later. He sang songs and uh, he sang songs with them and they encouraged him. The elder asked for two prayers and he was the first to pray after which he asked for me again. And there he took his last breath. We all rejoice the way he went, but deep down we are saddened because a limb is fallen from the family tree. We know that one day we will meet again. Let us all be faithful. May God be with you and give you comfort. May he wrap his arms around you and give you the peace and hope. Ushers, please stand by. I'll just offer a word of prayer, then we will sing the offertory hymn when we all get there. So most righteous and eternal God, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory. Father God, you are Lord of our lives, and we acknowledge you. Father God, I know today is a sad occasion, but Lord, you promise never to leave us nor to forsake us. So as we collect this offering, O oh God, we ask that you will bless it. Help us, O oh God, to use it wisely to the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask that you bless those who have to give and equally those who don't. Let us be reminded that the greatest gift we can give, Lord, is to surrender completely to you. Lord, thank you that you die on the cross and you have been resurrected. And for that, God, we have the blessed hope. So, God, thank you for everything you have bestowed upon us. Cleanse us, O oh God, forgive us and creating us clean heart. In your name I pray, amen. When we all get to heaven, we will stand at the last stanza. Sing his mercy and his grace.
selection from the Kakuun Baptist Church. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, afternoon. <laughs> Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow? We are now at the point where we will be attentive, we will surrender completely, and we will take out all distractions. So I now introduce to you Sister Kareen Miller. She's a woman of God. She's a member of the Hope World Baptist Church. She's a wife to one. She's a mother of three. And by profession, she's a public health inspector. I believe she has a message from God. So please be attentive and welcome what the Holy Spirit has for us. Sister Miller.
Bless the Lord, church. Bless the Lord another time. His eyes are on the sparrow and he watches over you. If you believe that God is watching over you, give God some praise in the sanctuary. I don't know Brother Owen very well, but from what I heard, I am sure he would not be pleased with you if you sit at his home going service as if though you were spectators. I believe that he was a man of God and a man who believed that God deserved our praise irrespective of life or death. I want to greet you well in the name of Jesus. He is indeed our soon coming king. And if you never believed that before, it's about time to wake up. Smell the coffee before you miss breakfast. The signs of the time, they're appearing everywhere. We don't need microscope to see them. Amen, church? So we need to give God praise when we have the time, when we get a chance to. Because there is going to come a day, just like Brother Owen, when we are going to lie very still and very quiet in our graves hallelujah let somebody praise the Lord he is indeed worthy to be praised hallelujah hallelujah I want to thank sister Camille for having led us this morning thank the musicians for that wonderful rendition I can see the the drummer he is charged and and he does not like slow music I could see the countenance on his face when the music is is going very very slow but to God be the glory and it is good whatever we do we must do it as unto God and give it our very best because at the end of the day only the things that are done for Christ will last I want to bring greetings warm greetings from the Hopewell Cocoon churches Baptist Church circuit of Baptist churches I want to greet you well on behalf of my pastor the Reverend Conrad Thomas who is unavoidably absent he has another funeral going on at our church but the work of God has to go on and so uh, the, the, the harvest is ripe uh, the laborers are few but thank God we are here this morning not just only to celebrate the life of the deceased but to be married mindful of that in the midst of death there is life and today we want to thank God for giving us life I want to share in the sadness of the family but I want to remind you that you should not mourn like people without hope but you should be contented in the fact that Job reminded us that a man who is born of a woman has but few days to live and so God has lent brother Owen to us for all of 46 years and we have to give God thanks for the life he has led we have to give God thanks for the way in which he lived his life and the crowd today is enough to tell me that he has lived and so I want to reflect this morning on the first lesson that was read John 14 1 to 6 and if I were to give this passage of scripture a theme this morning, it would be none other than love is greater than death. I say love is greater than death. Death. let us go to God in prayer father God we praise and thank you for the world in which we live and for the lives you have given unto us we thank you for the new life offered to us in Jesus Christ through his death on the cross and through his resurrection we thank you for the life of our brother Owen and all that he was he has meant to his family those who he met the lives he 
touch the lives he changed. God, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise because God, you are acquainted with death. You are acquainted with grief. You are acquainted with suffering. So this morning, Lord, we commend our lives in your hand, God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit which is the comforter hallelujah we pray this morning oh god uh, that your holy spirit will be with us uh, i pray even now god uh, that preaching will become easy and listening will become engaging i pray even now that the very words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together will be accepted in your sight oh god my strength and my redeemer may the people of god everywhere say amen love is greater than death when god creates god loves what God creates, God loves. And what God loves, God loves everlastingly. So even when you die, God loves you. I hope you will listen closely to those words. Cling to them and let them sink deeply into your life and into your heart. Let them echo through this day and carry you into the next. In other words, as you live from day to day, bear in mind that what God creates, God loves. And what God loves, God loves it with an everlasting love, irrespective of whom you are, irrespective of what color or creed you belong to, irrespective of whether you are poor or lowly or rich or famous. If there's anything that overcomes and sees us through, death is love. A love stronger than death. While I believe the truth of those words and the strength of God's love, I also know those words do not take away your grief. I know they will not dry your tears. They will not answer all the questions that today bring. How can a parent who outlives his or her son life, a parent who outlives her boy, possibly know the way we can't know the way but the bible tells us uh, that we know in part uh, and we understand in part uh, but there is gonna come a day when some of this uh, will unfold under our very eyes hallelujah i believe the truth of those words uh, and the strength of god's word hallelujah how can we know the way when death shatters our own world uh, and nothing makes sense anymore we can't we don't hallelujah but one thing we know that death is not final hallelujah as difficult as this question is there is another i think many of us bring a second question today and the question is some of you may have asked it aloud but others may have struggled with it silently somebody may ask you heard this sister said he slept off after a very peaceful prior meeting after intercession with the king of kings and the lord of lords why didn't he tell us we all knew that he was sick i have not met him personally or intimately but from what everybody said in their remembrance and the tribute it is obvious uh, that he lived with sickness it is obvious that he struggled with sickness it is obvious that he was hampered uh, by his inability 
easy to go about as some of us go about. Uh, but I stopped by here to tell you that he never gave up on life uh, because of love for his family, love for his fellow men, uh, love for his God uh, was greater than death. Uh, and so he struggled for 46 long years. Uh, and so he is gone to but his memories live on his memories will be with us for a long time the songwriter carefully penned he says memories don't live like people do but the memories of one that was loved the memories of one that was precious is enough to tell us that he has lived a good life he has lived a fulfilled life he has lived a life that though may seem short to us was enough for God because the Bible said it is appointed unto men once to die I want you to understand that this appointment you don't make you cannot call the mortuary and say I'm coming you cannot tell your family I'm leaving tomorrow you may tell them you're leaving and it happened but I tell you that it is mere coincidence because this is not an appointment you can make this is not appointment you can cancel but he was resilient in his pursuit because love is greater than death I've thought a lot about this second question I didn't have the privilege of knowing Owen but over the last few days and moments when I would have inquired about him I've heard stories about him learned what he was like and gained more information about how he died and what happened and as I did I realized that he made a decision he was he has made a decision to serve God irrespective of he had something in his mind and in his heart that were for people and were for God I gained even more clarity about this when you told me or when I read that the chosen scripture was John 14 for today's message the story about the many rooms in the father's house and Jesus promises to prepare a place for us and to be with us in that place what I have come to believe and understand is that Owen was not depriving anyone here of anything he was not depriving you of helping and loving him through all this this was his way of helping and loving you through all this you were the ones in his mind and in his heart he was saying to you I know that one day he may not have expressed it but he knew that there was gonna come a day when sickness would have overtaken him but he never gave up before the time he stood to the test he stood to the time and he endured but I want you to understand that Owen chose a room in the father's house over a bed in the hospital did you hear me church he chose to be a part of the family of God someone who is okay within himself someone who knows the many rooms of the father's house rooms of life healing light and love rooms of hope rooms of mercy mercy and forgiveness uh, rooms of mercy and beauty and generosity he knew the way that he wanted to take uh, grief has bidden that from us uh, but not from Owen I've never heard anybody said in their tribute uh, that he wallowed in self pity that he complained about his incapacity I never heard anybody said uh, that he wished that he would have died hallelujah I never heard anybody said uh, that he complained bitterly but I want you to understand that it was the way of loving and reassuring you it might not have been the way we would choose for ourselves or for Owen we would probably want him to have stayed around a little longer but I want you to understand that God was ready for Owen God was ready to change the trajectory of his life his book 
of life has now closed and he is did not get a chance to say goodbye to you but God knew that he was tired of fighting God knew that he was tired of suffering hallelujah the Bible said uh, that Owen oh, like all of us uh, there is coming a day when there shall be no more pain uh, there shall be no more suffering there shall be no more heartache uh, because Jesus said uh, the former things would have passed uh, there is coming a day uh, where we are going to trade our shame uh, we're going to trade our sorrows uh, we're going to trade our pain and we're going to lay them down for the joys of the Lord because love is greater than death so Owen choose it chooses his way when I say Owen did this way I don't mean Owen did it the way the old Frank Sinatra did. Owen's uh, way was different. He was away from everything we can see. He was grounded in his love for you, his mother, his father, his fellow members of the community. He was grounded in the everlasting love of God. He was grounded in the promises of Christ. He was grounded in the knowledge uh, that his life was daily being renewed even as his body was slowly dying. We who remain might be able to name the day or maybe even the hour of his death. Owen, oh, however, never knew the moment of his death. He simply passed from this life to the next. He never knew the way. But he knew that love is greater than death. I need you to trust the work of God. I need you to trust me when I say it won't seem true, but Owen loved his life and his presence are as real today as before he died. I don't know if it doesn't look like that way to you. I know you are in grief and tears and saying that it's not true. But I promise you it is. It is the gospel truth. He loved his life and his presence are different today, but they are just as real. That means we learned to listen. We had spoken to him. We had seen him differently. It means we must listen when we hear to the ears of our hearts. When our hearts are speaking to us. There are days when we have people in our community like Owen, when we don't give him the years that he need, when we don't stop by to say good morning. We must listen for his voice when it seems uh, that silence will always be near. We must trust his voice has never grown quiet. God speak to us uh, in the stillness of the moments. Uh, I hear somebody's song, the midnight cry. We don't know when was his midnight cry, but I'm sure like many of us, he had his midnight moments uh, when he would have laid by himself in his bed uh, and the only voice probably he heard uh, was the voice of the Lord uh, whispering sweet comfort to him. I know that when people are, are are suffering from sickle cell it is not an easy disease and to live this long I'm sure there were days when his body was riddled with pain hallelujah I'm sure there were days when he felt like he could not get off his bed I know there were days when he felt like he could not have hold a hospital appointment because his body was too weak to carry him hallelujah but I know in whom he believed and I'm persuaded that nothing absolutely nothing was able to separate him from the love of God because love is greater than death We must be willing to let 
ourselves be surprised. We must look for Owen's presence in new and different ways. We must keep the eyes of our heart open because you never know when a red bird might show up. You never know when his memories will visit upon you. You never know when the memories will be so strong that you wonder who is next finally tell the stories about owen and speak his name tell the stories of how his life intersected yours tell about the joys and laughter the sorrows and losses the success and failures Tell the ways in which he touched your life uh, and made a difference. Uh, never stop telling the stories. Those stories are not simple words. Uh, they create and call for presence. Uh, so when you tell the stories about Owen and how we speak, uh, when you tell them with your lips, uh, those stories are not just a recollection of past events. Uh, they are not a recitation of history. They are the never ending love stories uh, of the life of our brother Owen, uh, a very resilient young man, uh, a man who decided uh, that he would not just roll over and play dead, uh, a guy who decided uh, that it is not over until it is over because love uh, is greater. None of this will end the grief you have today. It won't undo what has happened. I know that instead it renews our hope. It does. I don't know if your hope is not renewed. But if your hope is not renewed, you need to go back to basics. It renews our confidence that there is a way forward even when we can't know the way, even when we don't see it, and even when we don't believe it. You see, life is far too sacred and the love of God and the love of our brother Owen are far too strong for death to have the final word. Life has changed, not ended. And that's why on this day, even at the grave, we may sing songs like hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because he is worthy to be praised. He has come in contact with God. And that is most important. In moments like this, it feels like death as one. But the Bible says uh, that love uh, is stronger than death. Your hearts are heavy. Tears flow down. Uh, cry if you must. Uh, cry if you may. Tears are a language uh, that God understands. Uh, he sees and he hears uh, the heart of the broken. Uh, he is there to comfort you. So cry if you have to. You look around and everybody you love uh, and everybody you can count on and everybody you can trust seem to be slipping through your fingers and it feels like death has won but i want to tell you that love is greater love is stronger than life the first family in genesis when cain killed abel it looked like death has won hallelujah noah escaped the flood still he died it looked like death as one. Isaiah was an eagle-eyed prophet. He could see thousands of miles and years away. Still, he died. It looked like death as one. Habakkuk had come as a prophet to Israel. Spoke truth to, so powerful, so profound. But no matter how close he was to God, still, he died. 
it looked like death as one. We see scientists and astronauts and politicians and thinkers of great ages of ages. And no matter how profound or prolific or bright they were, still they died. And it looked like death had won. Hallelujah. But the Bible says uh, that love uh, is stronger than death. Uh, and they went at it like two gladiators in a fight. Every time they entered into the ring and it looked like death. Hallelujah. Has won. But, and I know that some of you today, for you, it looks like death as one. But I rose to tell you that 2,000 years ago, love rolled into the ring and said to death, wait a minute, wait a minute death. You've been bullying people all your life. You bully prophets. You bully everybody that you come across. You've been doing it for a long time. But I want to set the record straight. I wish I have a testimony in the house. Because love is greater than death. They rolled up his sleeve. And they fought all over. Death and love fought all over Jerusalem and wrestled all through the cross and the fight went down to the grave hallelujah hallelujah that said see I did you just like I did to all the rest that started to have a party hallelujah the Bible said that death began his party on a Friday night I don't know some of you will party all night long some of you will party all weekend long the Bible said it was for one of those weekend parties it lasted for the entire night Friday it lasted all day Saturday Ah, it lasted up to Saturday night and it looked like death has won one hallelujah ah the bible said early sunday morning glory to god love rolled up his sleeves and said wait a minute wait a minute hey, the bible said that love went over and he grabbed death by the neck Glory to God. The Bible said when he reached down and he grabbed death, he said, Death, hey, where is your sting? Hey, love is greater than death. The Bible said when he grabbed death, he took the sting out of death. Hey, as if that was not enough, he went over to grave. He said, I've had enough of you. You hold me down for a very long time. I wanted to go, but you wouldn't let me go. Ah, now I'm free. You come running after me. The Bible said, he went over to the grave. He said, give me this. Victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle victory shall be mine because love is greater love is stronger than death I want you to understand in a very practical and pragmatic way that death has not won hallelujah your tears may flow your pain will come ah the flowers will wither the cars will be filed away the phone for owen will stop ringing the cakes and pies will stop coming owen will stop fixing your television owen will stop coming for breakfast owen will no longer call the game hey but i want to tell you that you don't don't understand think the death has won Owen is gone to a better place hallelujah Owen is gone to be with Jesus
Jesus. Ah, to be with Jesus. Because love is greater than death. Owen has no more pain. Owen has said goodbye to sickle cell. Owen has said goodbye to the medical clinic at Cornwall Regional. Owen has said goodbye to the nurses. Owen said to the pharmacy, you are no longer my best friend. Because I found a friend. His name is Jesus. He is the son of God. He is the great way maker. He is the great Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He has laid up for me a crown of thorn. He is gone to prepare a place for me so that where he is, I will be also. I'm sorry I never get a chance to say goodbye. I'm sorry I never get a chance to say it's my last day. But I want you to understand that the love I left for you is greater than the body that is lying still in the grave. Think on these things. Think of what I have led. Live on my legacy. You will learn. All of us know we have lost someone that we love. You'll be driving down the street one day and you might hear a voice that sounds like Owen talking in your head. Sometimes she might say something of comfort. She might pop up in your spirit. You may giggle inside about it, up to yourself about something that he said. You find that people really love and may love you outwardly, but never leave you inwardly. Owen is gone to a better place. Owen is gone on before. Don't mourn today. Prepare your life. His life was an example for you. His life might not have been lived as the rich and famous. But he lived a lowly life. He lived in the presence of God. Knowing very well that one day very soon. He will be walking on streets of gold. One day very soon. When he wakes up in the morning. Instead of taking an injection or a pill he will be drinking milk and honey ah when the roll is called up yonder if you will be there you might very well see Owen because Jesus said only a look at Jesus can change his entire life I'm not telling you that I'm preaching him into heaven I don't know where he is right now what I do know is that he had an advocate with the father he had enough time he had 46 years to make it right with Jesus I can't preach to Owen now but I want to tell somebody under the hearing of my voice you better make it right with God come and do it now Hey, under the cross of Jesus, lay those burdens down, lay those problems down, give it up for Jesus, because one day we too will die. But the Bible says, death is not final, because after death comes judgment. Hey, the Bible said on the day of judgment, the Lamb's book of life will be rolled out. He said, if your name is in there, you will have life everlasting because love is greater than death. Lose your opportunity today. Give Jesus a chance. If you have not yet make it right with God, Come and do it now. May the love of God, the peace of the Holy Spirit, the sweet communion that knowing that you are a child of the King, keep you in this period in life when it might appear that death has won. But it's a lie. Love will forever last. For God is love. And love is greater than God bless you. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine on him. Give God some praise.
What a word. Thank you, Sister Miller, for being obedient to the calling. Thank you for reminding us that love is greater than death. Thank you for reminding us that there's a time for weeping, a time for loss, for loss, a time for disappointment. But guess what? That's not the end of the story. There's also a time for restoration, a time for healing, a time for deliverance, and a time for celebration. God said he will make all things beautiful in his time. And I believe on that promise. And I know we are looking forward to that great resurrection. So thank you again, Sister Miller. Love is always greater than death. We now invite Cleveland Wood and Uncle. He'll be doing the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. After that lovely um, sermon, I really wonder if there's any need to say anything else. But um, the fact is that there always need to say something because there's always something more to say. And it's for that reason I am here to say the eulogy for Owen Charles Boyne. But before I go into the, 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 the um, eulogy, I just want to express on behalf of the family our own appreciation for the family friends who have turned out at this gathering from near and far. I particularly want to sing Lord a bridge of mine that when I left this district some 40 odd years ago, we met. And um, to date, um, wherever I go, or wherever I have issues of this nature, we always stick together. And this, this afternoon, we have none other than Ryland Salmon in the house um, with us. It's a journey. It's a journey. And thank God we are here witnessing another of this journey. Owen A.K. Squeaky, Little Head, O.B., Tit Willow, Hype Up, and a bunch of other names, was born on Wednesday, December 15th, 1976, from the, the union of Bethune and Father Simeon. He attended Kakoon Castle All Age School. Later, he, in his life, he attended Merlin Hattie High School. His dream was to be an electrician, but because of health, and you would have heard through the discussion about his health, he could not fulfill his dream. He then went he then went on to Nakalva to pursue a career in art. And I'm told that he loves art. It was something he was very, very good at. He would always draw his sister, nieces, nephews, and cousins. He was so good at art that he would even draw some of his teachers. And you know when you're drawing teachers, you sometimes, as a youngster, we tend to draw some artwork to mock our teachers. Teachers sometimes don't like it, and we, in my days, you would get some real beating for that, right? Owen did not stop there. Although his health was unstable, Owen still went on to learn technician where he would fix appliances, which, funny enough, he was great at. Owen ventured into so many fields, including photography. I think if Owen had the right camera equipment, he would be one of the best photographers in the community. And 
we would have been told that he took a photograph that was placed in, um, in the museum of the parish of Hanover. That tells the story. When he migrated to Antigua Barbuda, we lived for a number of years before returning to Jamaica. Within his time in Antigua, Owen did not allow his health condition to stop him. He went on to pursue his dream as a electrician. He started working as a electrician during the days and at night he does security work. Owen was loved and respected by everyone that he was acquainted with. After the death of Tamara, and by the way, Tamara was Owen's sister, he decided to return home. Upon returning home, he still did not allow his health, his determination, to take control of him. Instead, he was constantly doing something. Owen would fix appliances like radio, TVs, etc. for anyone, regardless of the severe pain he was feeling. The last year of his life, his health started to deteriorate, and he was unable to help himself as the pain became very severe and constant. Even with the aid of someone to help him and the constant pain, Owen was still determined, was still determined to help himself constantly pushing himself. When as an electric kettle that was burnt out, had become dysfunctional because of electric problem. But he would not throw it away. This I constantly tested skills and so he would have fixed it and reused it. He decided to fix with the help of Marie, um, the electrician, with the help of Marie, decided to fix with the help of Marie, and he taught Marie also about electrical and technician work. So Owen was a genius in his own way, as he was always coming up with new innovative ideas to make things work. A month before his departure from this life, he tried, but he was not going to give up. He, was, he said, the devil is trying to do everything to get me. But he told the devil that he was not going with him because he belongs to God. He was also... He would also, he also would hear, sorry, sorry. He also said he could not bear all the pain and suffering as it was becoming too much. But he knows God is helping him to bear them. The last thing he said the night before he died was that everything was going to be all right and that he was going to be okay. He leaves to mourn Mother Bethune, Father Simeon, sisters Marlene, Veronica, Petrina, Aunt Joan, Uncle Sammy. Sammy is the big brother, or the eldest of all of us. <laughs> and um, myself, Cleveland, Newton nieces, nephews, cousins, a bunch of other relatives and friends. Sleep and take your rest. Gone, but not forgotten. We love you, but Jesus loves you best. Special thanks to Mose, Marie, Marie. Special thanks to Marie, Tash, and the barber. I don't know the barber. Tash is also the barber. Oh my gosh. 
they have played very, very important and loving word to Owen in the last days of his life. And this is why I'm particularly pleased with the word that love is stronger or greater than death. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Hood. In the end, all we have is each other. So we should really love each other. Family members, I really commend you. God loaned him to us for 46 years, but you have a lifetime of memories. May his memories be forever etched in your minds. At this time, I'll ask that the family members remain seated and the other congregants stand as we invite Mrs. Christie to do the prayer for the bereaved family. As we invite uh, the congregation to stand and the bereaved family will be seated. Let's all bow heads in prayer. Father, Lord, God, we magnify you, Holy Spirit. You are our Lord, our Master, our Friend, our Deliverer, our High Priest, and our Strong Tower. We thank you, Lord, for being here with us today. Lord, your Spirit was here with us, and we glorify you, Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, even though because of this condition why we are here, knowing that from the beginning of man, we realize because of sin, death come into the world. And it is appointed unto all of us to die. But after that, the judgment is coming. And Lord, we must make sure we prepare ourselves, Lord, to meet you. It is not a meeting that we're going dead. It is a must that we're going to die. And we're going to see you one of these days. Lord, this was a lesson. To show that you are the one who is our resurrection. And the life giver. And so, Lord, we realize that when you saw what was happening to your friends, Lord, it causes you to weep. The word says you wept. That means when we look at the, 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 the word wept, it is your ball, your holler. And so, Lord, as these folks realizing that, that their loved one is gone, the pain is there, the ache is there, they're only left with lasting memories. And we pray you'll comfort their hearts, Lord. Help them to be united. Help them to be strong. Give them courage. And help them, Lord Jesus, that they will learn to love you as how they love each other. We pray you'll bless them. You'll encourage their hearts that as they go wherever they were living, Lord, they will be able to pass on the good news one to the other. Bless them as they go. Bless them as they are here, Lord. Bless them in their going and their coming. And we pray that salvation will be experienced in each and every one of them life. So that, Lord, at the end of their days, they too will experience Owen in the land of the living. Abide with us, we pray. Thanks for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We'll now have the recessional hymn and Paul Bearers at the third stanza. You may proceed. Precious memories. Unseen angels.
he looked beyond my faults in the song money nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed is the name of the Lord seeing that the earthly life of our brother has come to an end we commit his body to be buried earth to earth ashes to ashes dust to dust confident of the resurrection to the eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now observe a moment of silence. Let us pray. You Christ our King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, when you took out flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb, and you overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at, at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to our refuge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Brought with a price, of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at mine end and my departing. Amen. 
we sing the hymn in the sweet by and by. Sweet, in the sweet by and by. 
eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit and we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive then the benediction to him who is able to keep you from falling and to bring you faultless and joyful before his glorious presence. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, might, and authority from all ages past and now and forever and ever. Amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. Sleep well and take a rest. Lay down your head up on the Savior's breast. We love you well, but Jesus loves you best. Good night, good night, good night. Sleep and take a rest. Speak it. Okay, I'm going to sleep and take a rest.